Look, we have the rare sighting of the Key West black puma in its habitat, the jungles of Key West. Be very careful, they're very dangerous. <laughs> Whatever. Hey everybody, how we doing today? So let me introduce you to the new Key West kayak fishing kayak car and Puma. So this is the 2009 Honda Fit, which is the second generation. Bam, got about a hundred thousand miles on it. Single owner, so I'm second. Pretty much all stock condition except for the mods I made for the kayak. Now I bought this car back in January so I've had it for quite a while. I just didn't have a use for it because old Rusty was running uh, perfectly fine. Uh, but as I kind of predicted with the uh, summer rains raining every day uh, That was gonna cause a lot of troubles because basically there's so many rust holes on it and around the windows and all the seals and so forth that anytime it rained it basically flooded out old rusty um, I was starting to get problems with uh, these random misfires and running really ragged and clear up and then wouldn't start and then it'd work but the biggest telltale was is that when it would start having problems the gauges would just start f flipping out and just bouncing all over the place randomly. So I figured that was the computer gone and I didn't really want to deal with it. But truly the uh, final nail in the coffin was the mosquitoes. Oh, I would go in there and uh, because the water would pull up and everywhere, the, the, uh, all the belly plans, the trunk area underneath the foot wells, even in the ashtrays and the, uh, the armrests would just fill with water there. And then I wouldn't use the car for a while. I'd get in there and it would just be mosquito heaven. So that was pretty much it. I've had dengue fever twice and malaria once and I don't want that again. So uh, old Rusty is off to the shredding machine. So it's just a phone call away and it's gone. Uh, but in the meantime, I spent about the last month uh, putting together all the pieces to uh, get this new one all ready for the kayak. And I finally finished it. So, uh, ready to be used. All right, uh, let's go over some of the mods here. Of course, the uh, Yakima rack here. Uh, this is the new base units that uh, fit the certain type of car here. Um, one of the changes I did is between the gaps. The original setup is only like 24 inches gap between bar to bar. And that's no way that's gonna work on my 16 foot kayak. So I messed with the angles and kept stretching it out. So now I'm at a width of 36 inches from post to post, where uh, on my old Civic with the stretch bars uh, was at 38. So this works out fine, plenty of room and gap there. Um, also have the uh, Yakima pads, which are good. They actually hit the corner of the kayak versus underneath like my other ones were. So uh, it sits right on the hard area of the kayak, which I like a lot. So those land shark uh, pads will work out good there. Uh, also a big plus was it seems like the uh, diameter of the bars are smaller or the ones I got were smaller because now the uh, hooks for my ratchet straps actually fit around them. The uh, older ones was wider. So the, the, uh, the hooks wouldn't, fit really well so I'd have to keep putting them on and it wore through the uh, rubber coating and then it got to the metal salt water corrosion leaked rust along the window of the car and it was just an ugly mess but uh, that's a new setup there uh, these racks aren't cheap I think I've got uh, I bought used bases new bars new clips and foot pads used uh, uh, saddles and I still had like $450 into it so pretty expensive there. Then I needed to come up with a loading solution, which is very important to my heart because uh, loading a kayak is probably the biggest detriments for people stop kayaking and putting their kayak in the garage and not using it. Uh, the first thing that I was gonna try was this uh, uh, Yakima retractable loading bar, which basically pulls out and then it creates a support where you can lift the front of the kayak up put that there and then you're only having to lift half the weight of the kayak to lift the back up 
put it on the bar and then you can kind of slide it over. Um, that was my original thought process of how I was going to do this. One of the reasons uh, why I actually got this fit uh, style car in the base model was because I did not want to have any of the wings on here. Um, if you get the upgraded sports model, it's got that big wing that sits out there and then some under parts. But the biggest thing is I didn't want to have anything along this edge here so that I could lay the kayak if I needed to. With the bars being so far up like that, the only way to load it would have been like my Civic where I drop it on the actual um, hatch there and just drag it on there and just listen to the sand and the plastic just sandpaper it. But I didn't want to destroy this one right away. So I thought about this route, but then I started thinking it's going to be a pain in the butt with trying to get the kayak over the saddle. You got to kind of leverage it up and then lift it over. And I could do it, but it was just a pain. So I ended up kiboshing that plan. And that is why my kayak rack has three bars. Okay, and this is kind of what I did to my uh, other bars on the uh, Civic Old Rusty. These are the Q style bases. And because the Eclipse had uh, rusted and were gone and the car was actually gone, uh, cancer dyes rust all the way through there, the Eclipse would no longer holding it. So I had basically just drilled into the uh, shell of the car um, and into the bases of these Q towers. Then I just got uh, another set of used uh, bars um, these are just some generic um, bar uh, coverings with foam grip on them. So you'd put like your paddle board and whatnot on them. And that creates a little bit of a rolling pad. But uh, the other thing I didn't want to do was to put a hard roller on there so it slides real easy. But because when I do it, um, finish loading the car, I have to drain my kayak. So I'll put it on and then have it balanced so it's butt down, open up the drain hole and let the water leak out while I do other stuff. And with this cushion on there, it flattens out and then it stops it from rolling. And then I'm able to do that versus using something hard where it would just spin right off and it drop to the ground. Uh, but did that. So those three got me going. And it's a super easy uh, load now. Uh, probably even easier than a Civic. One of the things you'll notice is the height. Um, it's about 10 inches higher than on my Civic. One, just because the car roof is higher but also the way with the bars and the pads, it's another three or four inches just because of that. Um, so it would have, it does sit quite a bit higher, which means it would normally be a lot uh, more work. But since I installed this roller system on there, it actually equivalents out to uh, my Civic was. So that is my bar setup. Same deal, I'll just run the straps over, loop it around that side and back clip it to itself and it holds it soundly there. So that's the same. Now on the inside back storage area there uh, actually has quite a bit more room than my Civic, especially because it's got taller roof line, plus it's a flat back versus the uh, Civic, which was a slanted uh, hatch. Um, what I added in was the uh, Honda Fit uh, tray for the back trunk space. So when the seats are up, it fits perfectly within the well there. Uh, and that was important because uh, when I drain my gear, all that water, or when I load my gear, all that water just drains off. So I wanted a tray there. Then I just basically stuck a waterproof uh, covering there, just a tarp to keep that uh, side protected there. And uh, yeah, that works out fine. Like I said, I've got quite a bit more room than my Civic here, as well as uh, top rend uh, clearance there. On the driver's side is the same issue. I went ahead and I spent $130 on a pair of floor mats. Crazy, but these are the WeatherTechs. They're form molded to uh, your well there, and they've got high sides, so when I go kayak fishing, I wear um, wading boots, basically dive boots, and then uh, they fill with water and they're basically almost waterproof. So they fill full of water. When I'm done kayaking, I get in, sit in the car, and then I, I tilt back to uh, hit the accelerator, the clutch and the brake, and that water just basically drains out into the well here. I learned that with the Civic. Uh, so I ended up investing the $130. As you can see, it does a good job and I'm actually find it that's worthwhile to have that. Um, only other stuff that I really need to do on the insides here is I need to weatherproof or waterproof basically the speaker and the vents here on that side because that's where I put my paddles, the um, stakeout anchor and my net. 
so water will fill up all that area there so i want to need to protect that but yeah plenty of plenty of room and about the only thing that i'm missing which i've got on order should be here in another day or two to finish everything off is there's no real good way to uh, run a front strap in here for uh, tying down the front of the kayak especially when i go on like on a road trip or longer distances or if it's really windy out so i've got on order is the tow bar uh, adapter here so this pops out and then you screw in the eyelet and then uh, i could use that to uh, tie off and i could do that in the back as well then i'm pretty much done and uh, i've been using it this last couple of weeks and uh works out great uh air conditioning stereo power everything so uh super happy about it now the reasons why i bought the honda fit uh one is i really love my honda civic hatchback that thing was just a warrior i think i had it for about 10 years i bought it for 3200 dollars put uh bought a used uh, rack for 250 and i actually bought that car before i bought the kayak knowing that i wanted to get into kayak fishing but knew i had to get the car first two purchase was the rack and then three i bought my kayak but uh, I still wanted to stick with the Honda Civic line. I uh, just have so much faith in them, especially when I'm looking at a, a used model, 10 years, sub $5,000, um, 100,000 mile range, but knowing that it's still got another 100,000 into the cars without a problem. Uh, so I found this one, luckily. Uh, the key things I was looking at was to get a similar as the Honda Civic hatchback. Unfortunately, the newer ones are all aerodynamic and it's, it looks like a spaceship. And uh, the Honda Fit is the closest re representation of my old, old uh, 1997 uh, uh, hatchback. So that's why I went with this body style. It was between this one, a Nissan Versa. Um, I was looking at the Kia Soul. Uh, there was a Toyota Yaris. There's a Ford, uh, not the Escort, but whatever the Ford version. There's every company has it, but uh, I'm pretty confident in the Hondas. Um, I looked at the 2009 and uh, later because that's the second generation. Uh, so I know that the first two years with the new model, there's always problems and they were, didn't get the best reviews, but the second uh, uh, version and going forward, they got uh, really good reviews. So I was happy about that. Um, the key thing that I was actually looking for was a manual transmission. Bam. That was the biggest deal breaker there. Um, I did not want to have an automatic. I didn't want to have one of the uh, belt driven disposable transmissions that cost a couple thousand dollars if they go out. Um, I know that I could uh, replace a clutch pretty inexpensive wise or even a uh, five speed manual transmission is pretty cheap at the wrecking yard. And uh, that's a big thing if a transmission dies. Um, like the Civic, I wanted a car that I could keep maintaining and get 200,000 miles on it. And uh, that's kind of the reason why I stuck with the uh, Honda Fit with the five speed. Um, this was a very cherry setup. Um, it's a single owner car. Uh, it was a husband and wife up in Tampa. It was the wife's car, daily driver going to work. She worked maybe about five miles from the, her work where the house was. So it didn't get very many miles on it um they both took very good care of it uh, all the maintenances were done uh improvements were done so uh very cherry when i got it so super happy about that now the negatives first biggest negative is the height difference like i saying it's probably about six inches seven inches higher roof line versus my civic old civic and then you add the extra height because of the bar length and then the pads. So like I said, I'm about 10 inches higher sitting versus my Honda Civic and the rack that it had. And although it doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're kayak fishing a lot, multiply multiple times a week, uh, it could be kind of wear on you. Plus there's always that motivational factor. You're sitting at home, you kind of want to go kayak fishing, but then you're like, eh, do I really want to? Then you start thinking about, oh, then I've got to load and unload. And when I'm done fishing, I've got to load it back. Ah, eh, forget it, I'm gonna sit at home and watch TV. And then again, you, you tend to not go. So the easier it is to load your kayak and all that part of it, 
uh, the better off you are. Um, being this extra height is a bit of a concern. Fortunately, this worked out so good, so it's not such a huge issue, but I would like a lower line there. Another benefit I forgot to talk about because it's not such a huge one is this is a four door versus the two door um, hatchback on my old one. Although I really haven't used this the back door for anything because I get everything out of uh, loading it out of this direction here. So I'll probably never use those. Uh, second big negative is all the electronics, uh, the electric windows, electric door locks. That's not good when you're dealing with salt water. Um, I had a, a hand crank and that was bad enough because the inside guts would just uh, corrode out and just fall apart. So I was doing that, swapping those out all the time. Uh, then you got full electronics here and that's not good. Like I said, when I load my fishing poles, the, everything, it just drips water down here. Um, it's good to have a stereo system. Uh, I didn't have air conditioning, no power steering, no power door locks, see mosquitoes. Ugh. Uh, but this one has it, it's nice, but uh, I really could care less about it. I'd be happy if it didn't have any of that stuff. Um, yeah, done that. Nice layout for a drivable car. And here's another one of the big negatives that I think is the engine compartment and the uh, accessibility of the motor. Look how scrunched up that thing is. My engine compartment on my Civic was probably three times as much. I could reach totally around the motor and transmission from the top and reach through <laughs> and get at everything. Um, these are just tucked in there. It's just computer design so it maximizes space efficiency but it's not good when you're kind of a do-it-yourself repair person in order to get back in to change anything you have to take off this whole cowling just to get at basic servicing stuff and it's all packed in um, like I said I only thing that I had on my other car was basically the alternator and that's the only uh, uh, component that was driven off the motor but this has all that, the serpentine and everything, and ugh. So if something breaks, it's not just an easy replacement. Man, look how tight that is. And finally, I want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys basically bought this car for me. So uh, thank you to all everybody that's contributed within the last couple of years. Um, as you can see, it makes a huge impact on the channel. Um, things break, they get lost corrosion kills everything <laughs> and uh it's very nice to have that little bit of a bankroll that i could fall back on to uh get things up and going or actually being proactive and buying a spare knowing that it's going to die it's like the car here and uh it keeps me going and keeps me pumping out those videos so uh thank you a huge thank you to you guys um i actually do have the maze uh product testers club slash patreon giveaway um, I'll be posting that in the next video or two, so uh, keep an eye out for that. But uh, otherwise, uh, you'll be seeing the old uh, new kayak car out in the works there. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye.